America's first female firefighter is a rather unique position to have. You would think that history like that would etch its way somewhere into the history books. Unfortunately, we know very little about Molly Williams, America's first female firefighter. But what we do know is both intriguing and mystifying. So with that, sit back, relax, and let's get into some exceptional history. In the early 1800s, Molly Williams was the slave of Benjamin Imar, a distinguished New York merchant. While we do not have a clear picture of the sort of relationship Benjamin had with Molly, he had enough confidence in her to have her join the Oceanus Engine Company No. 11. We know that Benjamin was affiliated with this engine and was a volunteer fireman, but we are not sure why he thought Molly should be a volunteer firefighter as well. Some historians believe that she was brought to attend him, but this did not seem to be a common practice at the time, and there is no clear record of Molly fulfilling this position. Either way, Molly threw herself into her role as a firefighter and fully dedicated herself to engine number 11. In fact, she liked to boast that she was as good a fire laddie as any of the boys on the engine. As part of the volunteer fireman crew, Molly was known as volunteer number 11. When describing her, one witness said, I can see her now, with her nice calico dress and check apron, a clean bandana handkerchief neatly folded over her breast, and another wound around her head and rising up like a baby pyramid. Not only was she part of the fire department, but she was proud of it and believed that there was a certain amount of superiority to her engine number 11. But one particular shining moment in Molly's life makes her position as America's first female firefighter even more unique. In the winter of 1818, New York was simultaneously hit with a phenomenal blizzard and an influenza outbreak that knocked most of the male firefighters out of commission. At the time, the fire department wasn't exactly organized and worked more on a volunteer basis. Also, unlike our speedy fire trucks today, the 1800s version of a fire truck consisted of pumps with water that were set on large wagons, and though horses could pull them, they were usually hand maneuvered by teams of firefighters. In 1818's winter, with most of the firefighters down, a more perfect calamity couldn't have been planned better when a fire broke out in New York City on William Street. The problem was further compounded because the firemen who were left had to get the wagon with the pumpers through the snow-filled streets. To get a good picture of what that meant, imagine pushing a truck down a mud road that is sludgy or frozen. Don't forget that you are still in a blizzard. One historian says, The boys had the utmost difficulty in dragging their engine through the snow-obstructed street and had not men enough on the rope. Molly came along, hitched onto the rope, and helped to drag the machine to the fire. Molly became legendary for this act, a good tale that the people of New York told proudly for years, to the point that historians suspect some myth may be in the accounts. There is not much else known about Molly, but she may have lived to see the New York statewide emancipation of slaves in 1827. What we do know for sure is that, when asked about her job, Molly often responded, I belongs to old Levin. I always run with that old bull engine. I hope you liked that video. If you did, you know the drill. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and leave us a comment to let us know if you liked this, if you didn't like it, what you thought about it, and we will see you in our next video.